Okay, I'm gonna start this one over. For those of you who started off with me, not exactly sure what was going on there for a moment, but had some, hi, welcome back. I think I fixed whatever was happening. Anyway, we'll try again. We had just worked our way up onto hands and knees, so we're slowly moving around a little bit, taking your time, good, gradually working toward downward facing dog. Thanks for hanging in there with me. We'll give it a breath or two as you bring your hips up high. Just work on pedaling around through the feet. Twisting the hips and the heels. Let yourself lift and lower a couple times and just keep working it out. Shake out your head, shake out your neck, shoulders, whatever needs to move around. Take time and move it around. Now we're good to go. Move your gaze forward from this down dog and let's just walk it nice and easy up to the top of the mat. We'll move anything out of the way that needs to go so that you've got plenty of space to start swinging the hands gently side to side. All right, and if you're just jumping back on, again, I kind of had to start us over this morning. Just a couple of technical difficulties there, but working our way through 45 minutes of flow, we always start kind of slow and low and then build up to it. So take your time, no need to rush. When you do feel ready, however, you're just gonna roll and stack and rise all the way up to stand tall on your mat. Shoulders back and down a few times. And then take the hands to press at heart center. Close your eyes, move down through all 10 toes. Feel a little bit of heat start to build between the palms of your hands as you press them gently together at your heart. Set an intention or a dedication for your day if you have one. Maybe just a little something to keep in mind as you move through your practice. It can be as easy as just remembering to breathe. And on that note, we'll take a great big inhale. Let your eyes open, circle your arms up and overhead, full body stretch there at the top of the mat. Exhale, dive. We'll start off with some simple sun salutations. Even though the sun's not shining today, we'll build some heat from the inside out. Step walker, hop back from high to low. Take it down to Ranga. Remember, halfway or all the way, that's up to you. Bhujangasana is a little back bend, that's cobra. Up dog is a big back bend. You can pull all the way through, Urdhanka, and back to downward facing dog. You'll find your way into down dog. And again, just relax wherever possible here. Try to soften the space behind your knees. Let your heels get heavier. Same with the crown of your head. Three, two, and one. Take a look forward, right foot steps through. Nice low lunge and a few moments here to just rock it out forward and back, maybe Give the hips a little swivel side to side. Okay, lifting and lowering forward and back until your hamstrings start to catch on, that it's their turn. And let things lengthen out a little here. Simply rocking your weight. Front foot to back foot. And when you feel good, finish your step to the top. Nothing to it. Forward fold right there. Inhale, reverse and rise. We're coming all the way up again to the top. Take it right through heart center and exhale, fold back down. Half lift. Ardha Uttanasana. Plant the palms. Step, hop or walk back. Elbows tight to the ribs. Straight down you go. Inhale. Up dog or cobra. Exhale back, 
Downward facing dog and breathe. So I had mentioned earlier that I can't have music on in the background when I teach on Instagram, which sucks, but I have all sorts of really good playlists on the Nordeast Yoga Spotify. So if you don't follow us, it's all one word, capital N-O-R-D-E-A-S-T-Y-O-G-A. -E uh, you can always sync up a little something anytime we're moving. Let's keep going. Left foot steps through when you're ready. Nice low lunge. Hips just moving around at their own pace. A little bit forward and back movement. And perhaps well, dropping and twisting gently. So this is the type of stuff that I, I can't tell you how to do it. I can't tell you what to do, right? You have to listen to what your body needs. And just instinctively let yourself make some different shapes here. Connect your breath to what feels good. Lengthening on an inhale. Deepening a posture as you exhale. And wherever you are, give it one more cycle of breath. And then take a look forward. Finish your step back to the top of the mat. Exhale, fold. Reverse and rise. You're going to take it all the way up. Arms to the top. If you see me moving around kind of funny on my mat sometimes, I'm just avoiding this big chandelier that hangs a little too low in my dining room. I've almost uh, pulled it out of the wall accidentally a few times over the last seven months. So inhale, lengthen, step, walk, or hop back again. High to low, you might see me walk forward. I'm just working around that space issue. Back to downward facing dog. This time we'll add a right leg up high. So instead of stepping right through, take a full stretch up, little three-legged down dog. Good. Toes up as high as you'd like. You can always opt to bend that knee if that feels better. Your practice, your body. Swing it through to your low lunge. Plant your foot. This time we're gonna sink deep into the lunge. Let your back knee just tap for a moment there. And then push back and intentionally stretch out both hamstrings now. Toes flex, maybe up and off the mat. You're just gonna hold. Three, take the tension out of the back of your neck. Relax your jaw, relax your forehead, two. And one, shift your weight back into your front foot. This time, back foot's gonna lift for a moment. Before you finish that step to the top, Hold a little standing split pose. If you need your right knee to bend, that's okay. Same thing, try to soften up the upper back. Three, two, and then gaze forward slightly. On one, you're just gonna take a little curtsy squat here. Just bend the right knee enough to tap your left kneecap to your shin, or pardon me, to your calf, and then right back up and look underneath your legs. Follow your toes up high. Good. Two more. Down low. Inhale, kick it back up. One more time. Cross behind. Little tap. Inhale, kick back up. And exhale, set your feet side by side at the top of your mat. Exhale, fold and relax. Next inhale, we'll reverse. Bring it all the way up to stand top. Exhale, dive back down over the leg. Half lift and lengthen. We're going through this one more time. Step, walk, hop, or float. Back and down. Up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lead with the hips. Right leg, pardon me, left leg. Up high. It's Monday. I'm gonna cut me some slack. My brain's not working yet today. <laughs> Keep those toes up or bend your knee. Open your hip, breathe. Try not to twist through your upper body or your shoulders. So shoulders are square. All 10 fingers pressing down, flat through the palms. Good. Release and step through. Low lunge, tap the back knee all the way to the mat. Hold that for a breath. Good. Hips up high, pyramid stretch with the added flex of the front toes if you'd like. Drop the forehead in toward the shin and breathe. Three, two, 
And one, gaze forward, weight goes into the front foot, comes out of the back foot, and you dive even further. Crown of the head really heavy now. Bracing yourself on your fingertips, breathe. One, take a look out, swing down into your curtsy squat, tap, kick right back up. Now, if you don't want to set your right foot down, you can let it hover. That's going to take a little bit more out of you and you're going to have to get a little lower. You pick the level of intensity that's right for you. One more time, or you could even come down, bring your hands to your heart. Guess what? You're going to get to do that a few more rounds, so you'll have a chance to switch it up. Step back to the top of the mat and exhale fold. All right, let's flow it. Adding on a couple more postures this time. We'll take it all the way up to stand tall when you're ready. Meet me at the top of the mat. Sweep the arms overhead and dive back down. Half lift and lengthen. Now here's the one change. We're gonna skip the vinyasa and we're just gonna step the left foot back. So right there at the top of your mat, you're just gonna step that left foot back. There's your low lunge. Good, tap the back knee down for a moment. Hip flexor stretch, push it back, flex the toes, pyramid pose. Shift your weight back into your front foot, float off the left and dive over the right. One breath, inhale, look out. Three times, curtsy squat here. One, and kick back. Two, you can keep the hands down or you can bring them up towards your heart. One more time, sweep, squat low, three, kick back up, take a deep breath in. Listen close. Now don't set your feet together at the top this time. Look behind you and set that left foot all the way back into the lunge position once again. Now add on, all the way up to the top, Om Janayasana. Good, find your balance in this lunge. Even out the weight in your feet and drop your center of gravity a little bit lower. Palms are gonna come together overhead. Take a big breath with me here. On the exhale, let's revolve. Now, if you need to modify, just put this back knee back down, no problem. Otherwise, we're gonna hook the elbow to the outside and then really start that rotation through the spine, pressing through the palms, and trying to move your thumbs a little closer to your heart center. Three, two, and one, hands down, listen close, downward facing dog. Take it back and exhale completely. And from your down dog now, inhale out to a plank. Exhale, you can lower halfway and listen. Push right back up. Three little push-ups or use your knees. Either way, there's two. And one, high plank, down dog again. Left leg lifts up. Give it a kick behind, straight up and back, or an open hip, either one for a full exhale. Step through when you're ready. Set that foot into your lunge, right knee taps. Chest lifts just a tad, hips high, rock back, flex the toes. Pyramid pose, take a look forward, weight shifts into the front foot, Float your right leg high and dive in deeper over the left shin. Gaze out, sweep behind, squat low, one, kick back up. You do it three times, exhale, two, once more, down low, and one, kick back up and hold. Set that foot all the way back into a lunge position and this time the arms come up. Pull in your side bodies, get long, breathe. Lift the chest, lift the gaze. Just the hint of a back bend and then the hands come through heart center and we revolve. Option to lower if you need that lunge a little closer to the ground. Otherwise, Parivrita Anjaneyasana, rotating here. Five big exhales, four, Three, two, unwind hands to the ground. Now we're stepping forward. 
Feet back at the top and exhale, release. Take it through with me one more time the other way around. We go all the way up to the top. Full stretch here. Exhale, dive. Good. And fold. Inhale to lengthen. Right foot goes back. Deep exhale, sink in. Now, if you wanted to add a little bit more of a crescent lunge position here, you can. We've already done the two sides, so it's okay to go a little bit deeper. Hands come down, then hips go up. Rock back. Heels on the ground. Maybe the left toes flex a little higher. Good. Shift your weight into your front foot. Float off the back. Maybe this time you want to add a little half moon in here if you'd like. You take your right arm up. Open that pose. Hips and shoulders to the side. Gaze moves to the side as well if you'd like. Or you can even work on looking up here. Good. Then both hands to the ground. And three more right here. Last three on this side. Five. Two. Get in there nice and low once more. Kick it up. Step back. Arms come up right away. The moment that back foot touches down, you sweep up and exhale, twist. Good. Second time here, you want to open up your arms, make a bigger version of this posture you sure can, or just keep them right there at heart center. That feels best. Then stick with that. One more. Exhale completely, hands to the ground. First one is down dog. So you move back and let all that breath out. High plank, inhale. If you don't like chaturanga or you don't care for those push-ups, you're just gonna plank it out right here for a few moments. Otherwise, three times. Halfway down, push right back up. That's one, two, Three, back to downward facing dog and the right leg lift. Kick it up, open and stretch for a breath. Hmm. Big step through. First lunge is really low. Back knee taps down. Maybe you're going to add the arms in. Get everything pulling together there in the midline of the body. Hands come back down. Hips go up, press through the heel. Hands on the mat, shift forward, lift. Take a little dive in first. And then if you're thinking about half moon, Ardha Chandrasana on this side, open up to the left. Stack the hips, stack the shoulders, always working to see how close we are to getting some weight out of that bottom hand, right? Gaze can move to the side or gaze can move up. And then on your next breath, both hands come back down, left leg swings deep behind. Curtsy squat, kick up, look back. One. Two. One more, one more. Kick it up. Three, still looking behind you. Set that foot way back into a lunge and the arms come up. Side body muscles pull in. Slow and intentional, swing over and then rotate. Ah, find your balance, right? Sometimes you go a little quick, you fall over like I just did. Palms press. My left leg could not be longer and stronger than it is right now. I'm really rooting back through that heel. Yeah, so lots of, lots of extension on that left side. Lots of rotation on the right. One more big exhale. If you opened up your arms or you did something fun on the first round here, second time, change it up if you want it. And then hands come down. We step to the top and fold. Stay right there. Work your feet open about as wide as the edges of your mat. Turn the toes out, draw the heels in, and then just kind of swing down into a deep squat. And if you can't get both your heels on the ground, that's okay. You can prop yourself up here a little bit. Sometimes it just helps to rock. Encourage your hips to release a little bit more. 
And then if you do find a moment where you're comfortable and you can just sit in this pose for a second, lift up through the crown of your head. Root down all 10 toes. Notice how hard it is to keep the same amount of weight in your pinkies as you have in your big toes. That's just our general inclination to kind of want to roll inward here so that we don't have to work so hard. But we do want to work hard right now. We do want to engage all those tiny root lock muscles, Mula Bandha, all the little muscles behind and below your belly button, Uriana Bandha. Pull in, lift those babies up. Feel the intensity for a moment or two. And it really is just a moment. And then we'll release. Hips come up. Nice big rush. Ah, all the way down the legs to the feet. Wiggle the toes. And start to move toes and heels a little bit closer. We're going to get one last little sequence in here before we wind things down. Good. So toes and heels come back together. This time, let's bend the knees, circle the arms. We'll get a good fierce pose, Utkatasana in, sinking back into the hips. Yeah, pulling and lifting those low belly muscles up off your upper thighs as much as you can. Two. And one. You're going to swing the hands down. And once they touch the ground, pick that left leg up and send it high behind you again. So back into that standing split position one more time. If you haven't already and you still wanted to get one more half moon in, I'm going to open this up for you for a breath. Left arm can come up. Maybe you're more of a twisted half moon person and that's okay. Try the right arm up. Either variation, another breath, and then both hands down, meet me here, and we're gonna take that big step back once more to our low lunge and come all the way down onto the back knee. Good. This time as you press back, flex your front toes towards your nose, but keep yourself low to the ground. So we're not sending both legs straight. We're on that left knee, sinking back into a little splits prep. You didn't know that I was gonna sneak you into the splits today, but here we are. Flexing the toes and diving slightly further on the right or lean into it and scoot your right heel forward an inch or two. And then just continue to put a little pressure. See how that feels. Walk your hands forward a step. Relax your upper back, relax the neck, the shoulders, the jaw. These places I'm gonna to continue to remind you of because they're the places in the body where we just don't even realize we're really holding on. So it's nice to go back and just re-relax. This feels good, you stay right here. Maybe you're ready to slide the heel forward another inch or two. If that feels good, fold again. You can see that as time goes on, inhale, we lengthen, we slide the heel another inch or two. Ah, once you get on to the hardwood floor or if you're on your carpet, be careful because things don't slide as easily. And then, you know, if you're working toward a splits practice, great. If you're not working towards a splits practice, great too. It doesn't matter whether or not you ever do the splits, right? It has really not much to do with, with what's important about our yoga practice. But if this is a good spot for your body, work into it as deeply as you'd like. And we're just going to breathe. Three, two, what? Engage all those little tiny muscles again. Mula Bandha, Uriana Bandha. Pull yourself back until you've got plenty of room now. Release the tension in your front hamstrings. Shift your weight back into your front foot. Okay. Back toes tuck and you're going to move from this lunge to three-legged down dog. So what does that mean? push back and lift that right leg up. And it should feel pretty good to just shake that out a little bit. Shake that stretch out. Let it go. And we're going to bring the right leg right back through for half pigeon. So this isn't a very long sequence. It's just a couple of poses and we'll get time to flow at once too. Sink in. Half pigeon pose. Right shin comes across the mat. Find a good angle for you. About 45 degrees is plenty for most people. 
more of a 90 degree angle with the front edge of your mat if you're a pretty open hipped person. If you don't need to lean forward here, if that's too much pressure on your knee, then don't. Keep your chest up. If you like adding just a little bit of a forward fold, let your heart drop forward and down. And over and over again, we're gonna check to make sure that we're not tight in the neck, we're not tight in the jaw, we're not clenching the teeth, we're not clenching our butt, we're just trying to relax whenever possible. your hands lift your chest up here get your fingertips in as close to your body as you can and take a little baby back bend just lift your heart up it feels really good especially on that left side frontal hip flexors to open all of that up but as you release swing your weight into your right hip swing both legs around to the front shake them out a little bit if you want if you need And then rock back and find me in boat. We're just gonna put a tiny little core work piece in here, holding any version of boat pose. You can bend your knees, you can keep your heels on the ground, or you can lift your legs up as high as you can go. And we're here for three, two, we're gonna come down into a little canoe or half boat, Ardha Navasana. Get as low to the ground as you can without giving up. Three, two, one, sit back up. Hold at the top again. Three, two, one. Get low. Three, two, one. One more time. Up, two, one. Down, three, two, one. Rock it up. Cross the ankles. Good. Rock your weight through a little vinyasa here. High to low if you want it, or just a plank. If you'd rather take a push up. We've put that option in a couple of times today. And then step, walk, or hop right back to the top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Knees bend, arms reach up. Utkatasana. Finding that fierce pose, sinking a little bit deeper. Hips back, tailbone heavy. Two, one, hands down. Right foot sweeps up and back behind you. Hold the standing split for a moment, or you can stay there. If you didn't take half moon on the first side, then just hold. If you did, you're gonna take it on this side as well, or maybe you took that revolved version, Paririta Anjane, or pardon me, Ardha Chandrasana. Lots of different ways to go with it. When you've gotten everything out of your system, you take that big step back to the low lunge and drop all the way down onto your right knee. This time, push your hips back. Ardha Hanumanasana, half splits, just the left shin is extended in front of you and you're folding a little bit deeper. Each time the breath leaves the body, You've got the opportunity to scoot your heel forward an inch or two, work from there. So engage where it's necessary, right? Lower abdominals, bandhas stay engaged. Everything else, we're just trying to soften as much as we can. You can slide as close to a full split practice as you'd like. 
when you get there, keep yourself very focused on your breathing, very in the moment here. This is a really intense posture. There's a lot going on. And when we let the mind wander off to other things, that's when potential for injury sneaks in and nobody wants that, right? So listen to your body. Two, one, slowly draw back into that furthest stretch position in the half split and then shift your weight forward. Plant your hands. Left leg's going to go up high behind you for a moment. Give yourself the opportunity to stretch and then swing it into half pigeon. Left shin across the mat. This time we're turning the right frontal hip bone down. Good. And we can stay on the palms. We can stay up high or we can get down low. Either way. It's more about what's happening to the breath. Are you able to slow things down? Are you able to relax a little bit? You know, and you're, you're in the comfort of your own space right now, most likely, right? So, it feels good to let some big exhales out your mouth. <laughs> Things that we usually aren't doing all that often around other people right now. And uh, a good sigh <sighs> and an open mouth exhale just feels excellent in this pose. So a couple of those. If you're watching this later on um, today or in YouTube, you know, you can pause these parts. And if you want a five minute pigeon, stay for five minutes. Stay for 10 minutes. <laughs> Stay as long as you'd like. For the sake of moving right now, though, let's come back up. We'll find the hands. Good. Take that little baby back bend long enough to open up from your heart to your belly button, and then just sit down and relax on your left hip. Legs come around to the front. Everything gets a little shake. Maybe a quick touch of the toes. And rock it back. Find me in boat. And once again, three. Now, if that lowering down doesn't work for you, you don't have to do it. You can just stay right here the whole time. Two, one, lower down. Three, two, one, sit back up. Use your strength, not momentum. Three, two, one. One, low, three, two, one, back up, three, two, one, three, two, one, rock up, tuck the ankles, take a vinyasa. All right, I promised you a flow. We can sneak it in here real quick. We're going to start it from down dog, though, so just take your right leg up for a moment. One big breath in. Step your right foot through to a low lunge, drop to your back knee. Inhale, press back, flex your toes, take a little dive over your front shin. Stay right there or exhale. Slide out to the splits. If you're comfortable in the splits, add your arms up overhead this time. One big exhale and release. Splits pull carefully back to meet us. Everybody put your weight in your front foot. Take your right leg high behind you to three-legged down dog. If you're out of space like I am, then just kick up as far as you can and swing through to pigeon. One breath at the top of your pigeon pose. One big exhale to get you as close to the ground as you can go. Good. Lift up. Swing your weight around. Both legs out in front. This time just a full stretch up. One big exhale over the legs. Good. Sit up one breath at the top. One breath at the bottom. Up and cross the ankles. Last chance for a vinyasa right here if you want it. 
Good. Left leg lifts for a moment. It's a step through when you're ready. Drop to the back knee. Press back, inhale, flex and hold or take a little dive down. Otherwise, you can slide, make all sorts of fart noises on the floor with your feet into a full split. If you're comfortable, take your arms up. If you're not quite comfortable, you can always just do one or keep your hands on the ground. You can see this side for me is much tighter than the other, so I'm going to stay put. Okay, And then reverse, slide it back. Shift your weight forward again. Plant your hands, swing that left leg up once more. Just a little kick behind you and then underneath the body for half pigeon this time. Heart center leads the way on the lift. Take it down as close to the ground as you can for a full exhale. Get every last drop out. Chest comes up. Take a seat, swing the legs around, shake them loose. Grab anything that you might want to have with you for Shavasana. Come out, touch your toes with me one more time. This time as you sit up, don't lift your legs, keep them on the ground, but just roll her down with me nice and slow. Five, four, keep rolling. I'm just going to turn sideways here. Three, two, and you're all the way down on one. Stretch the arms out for a moment. Up and overhead. And swing the knees in. They get a quick squeeze. Maybe just want to pull those knees out wide or take a quick happy baby, quick straddle. Really not much on the end here today. Just a few things to get you settled in. And then it is 12.45 on the dot. So let's take just a couple moments at least of Shavasana. And like I said, if you're not confined by time, then stay here for a good five minutes or so. And same thing as you settle into Shavasana. A few open mouth, sighing exhales will most likely feel good. Okay, my friends, you stay resting right where you're at. Please don't move a muscle. I just want to thank you for hopping on. Remember that we are Monday and Wednesday noon for our live classes now. Um, stretchy nap on Saturday at 1 is up in the air. I haven't had anybody participate yet, and it is kind of taking away from the people that are in studio with me um, to not be able to have any music on or anything like that. So... Um, and it, we'll give her one more round maybe, but um, if, if no one's on for restorative on Saturday, then we'll just see you here on Monday and Wednesday. We're just going with the flow of what everybody wants. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Take good care of yourself for the rest of the day and the rest of the week. And I will see you soon. Um, if you're interested in making donations or buying class passes for online um classes, you can always do that on our website at Nordic Yoga, or you can Venmo 
Annie Hansen, that's my last name, H-A-N-S-O-N underscore Northeast Yoga, or PayPal us at Northeast Yoga at gmail.com. I can put all that information out there for you guys again, but thank you so much. See you soon. Have a great day. Namaste.